Evening everyone. So, how narcissists respond to boundaries. And this is always, um, it's a difficult one putting boundaries in place with narcissists because naturally they don't like them. They don't like them because they're so used to getting their own way. They're used to you doing exactly what they want. Um, and so when you try and put those boundaries in place and say no to them, essentially, that's what it comes down to. They don't like it. They don't like being told no. And I think it's important that we identify where that's come from. So if we think back to a child narcissist and how they were raised. So if you've got children with a narcissist, you'll know how they raise their children. They don't set boundaries with them. They are strict. They can be overly strict and overly controlling, but it's not boundaries, it's control. And they're very, very different. Boundaries are safe and secure. They are a guide for where, how far is too far. So if you think about it in terms of land boundaries, it's not a wall normally. Well, it can be a wall, but it's a it's a guide for where the edge of behaviour is, how far you can go. Control is a very firm no. So it's like having they're like having a boundary with um, razor blades all over it. It's that kind of environment with their children very much um you will do as i say and so they're raised like that that's how they are raised themselves they're raised to not be listened to to just do as they're told and so obviously that's kind of what they think is normal that's their norm in terms of parenting but it's also their norms in terms of behavior and actually it works for them for a long long time they have perfected the art of getting people to do what they want. They start off by being sort of overly affectionate and very um, giving and you do what you want because you want to make them happy and um, or they might play the victim and so you're left to feel like you kind of have to say it but you do it because you want them to be happy and you feel like they've never really had that so you know, it's okay if you surrender or you sacrifice what you want because they've never had that before and you've got more than enough and so they can have that. And they condition you to not have those boundaries, to do what they want, to surrender and sacrifice your wishes and feelings. And they turn this into their behaviour and your behaviour. And so you don't really have any boundaries you start to or your boundaries become very weak and very flexible and fluid like kind of like um, a holy umbrella <laughs> so they're, they're there in spirit but they're not a great deal of use um and that's because they find ways around you and initially it will start off there with a bit of a guilt trip that um they wouldn't that yeah i've never had this or um, it would be really nice to have that. I feel really bad, but this would make me feel great. And, you, you know, you've heard it. And then um, it can get more vicious than that. So if you, they don't get their way, they can become aggressive and violent um, and nasty and make it out that you're selfish for, for doing anything. And when you're a nice person, hi, Jermaine, it's a nice... It, when you're a nice person, you really don't like being told... Um, that you're doing something wrong you the last thing you want is that you're hurting anyone and so you will you will drop your boundaries you will your boundaries will become very flexible and so you can you're conditioned to behave like that you're conditioned to have flexible boundaries and you can kind of become co-narcissistic in that and what we mean by that is one person rules the relationship or the family that how they behave what they want becomes the norm for the entire family and it's very cult like in that so when you want to break out of that and you want to start enforcing those boundaries let's look at what happens in a cult well you get booted out don't you you get they don't like it so they'll either come down really strong and put pressure on you and um, that you can't do that they can um hammer home that this is the only way that you're being really unfair that um 
you're the worst person ever. How dare you? How selfish are you? Um, and throw everything at you. They can cut you off. They can discard you or silent treatment you, which is the same, isn't it? It's that control of basically um, a not so subtle way, but without use of words, saying you will do what I want one way or the other, because if you don't, these are the consequences. And as you stick to them, as you become stronger and you stick to them more, and they realise that the old tricks that they used aren't working anymore, this is when they can be quite dangerous and because they don't they really aren't comfortable. This is they're in actual pain at this point. Emotional, psychological pain because all of their old mechanisms for getting you to do what they want for for having their needs met, they're suddenly not working and they go into pure panic mode. They've tried everything. They've tried love bombing. They've tried hoovering. They've tried the control tactics. They've tried silent treatment. They've tried withdrawal. They've tried discard. And it's not working. And suddenly they just don't know what to do and they go into caged animal kind of mode. And they lash out and they will use anyone and everything around you and this is often where smear campaigns can start if you've ended the relationship because they will start using your boundaries i'll come back to you david they will start using your boundaries as an excuse that you are being abusive they will use that term to other people they won't even answer my calls they're so abusive that they're doing this. And actually what you're doing is you're putting a boundary in place. So what is hoovering? Hoovering is, if you think of what a hoover does, it sucks up. And that's what they do. So they come in and they'll... So you say your relationship's broken down and you've decided enough is enough or or you've been they've, they've disappeared for a while and you assume that the relationship has ended because you haven't heard from them in weeks. And... Rather than come back and sit down, have an explanation with you about what happened and talk it through, obviously they're not capable of doing that, they will start with, say, a completely random text that they might even pretend that they've texted you by accident. That's a common one. So, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that text that, and it was for someone else. But it's a way to get you to reply back. It's a, it's a baiting kind of thing, um, a very gentle baiting that they um, just want to hook you back in slightly. So it is, it's that suction of trying to get you back into a conversation, trying to lure you back in to whatever gets their needs met. So I hope that answers that. Um, so yeah, when how do they respond to boundaries? It's incredibly a negative response to boundaries. They don't like them because they're not used to them. They've never been comfortable with them as children. They've not had them as children. For them, boundaries have been purely about either rejection or control and anger and aggression. And so they're kind of just behaving like, they behave like children. They behave like they were as children, how they were treated. And so they don't have the skills and the emotional processing and the reasoning to be able to respect someone else's boundaries. The other part of that is obviously they lack empathy. So they can't see from your point of view why you would want to do that. And I think we can relate in a certain respect is if someone, if we're used to someone doing something for us, when they suddenly decide they don't want to, we can be a little bit uncomfortable with that because it's become a habitual but most people will adapt. Narcissists are very, very set in their ways. They do not adapt. They're not adaptable beings. They just will, if they can't make it work in that situation, if they can't get their way, they just turn nasty or they run for the hills and meet someone else who will do what they want to do. They are not adaptable beings, like I say, like the rest of us, where we would sit down. So if someone's like, so your partner um, always did the cooking, for example. You did the washing up and that was set. And all of a sudden they decided they don't want to do the cooking anymore. They want to do the washing up. You can do the cooking. You might feel a bit, oh, well, I was kind of used to it being that way. But you would adapt. You'd, you'd maybe come to a compromise or you'd do it for a bit. However, that would work. But you wouldn't throw a wobbly and tell them they were selfish and abusive and then go around telling everyone they were selfish and abusive 
and that's what narcissists do. So, Jermaine, yeah, yeah, tell them to fuck off, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, going no contact is always the best approach. It's just difficult when you have children, and which is why the grey rock method is so powerful, because when you don't have boundaries with a narcissist, what they're doing is they're feeding off of you. They, they, they are emotional and energy vampires. So when you don't have any boundaries up you are giving them everything you are giving them your energy you're giving them your emotions now they may be good they may be bad emotions but they don't care they are feeding off it like a vampire feeds off blood it it um rejuvenates them to have your emotions and your energies when you start putting boundaries in place they are starved of that and they will try harder or they will go somewhere else to get fed and as awful as it sounds you know better uh, this will sound horrible i'm aware of this better someone else's problem than yours your your priority has to be yourself and leave the other person whoever their next supply or victim is then they have to learn those skills themselves but in putting boundaries in place you are protecting yourself but you're starving them and like I said, it's like a caged animal kind of response of pure anger and aggression um, and nastiness and vengeance. They want to hurt you because they are in pain. I'm not saying this to be sympathetic, but in understanding that it, it helps you in knowing how to deal with them. They are actually in physical pain in the same way when we feel uncomfortable with the situation it feels painful to us this is this is what they're going through but they don't know how to deal with that they've never been taught the skills of either self-soothing or how to how to look after yourself how to do self-care and so they are looking to you or someone else to make them feel better and if they can't do that they do go into that childlike um rage throw a tantrum and that caged animal approach of they'll lash out and they will bite and scratch and hurt in order to get their own way. Um, so why would you put boundaries in place? Well, it is to protect yourself. It is to starve them of that supply. Um, it is to keep your energy and your emotions safe. It is... It's honouring yourself. I think that was one of the biggest things for me was that every time I allowed my boundaries to be walked all over, I wasn't choosing me. I was choosing someone else over me. I was putting someone else, someone else's needs and wants way ahead of my own. And when you put boundaries in place, what you're essentially saying is, I'm choosing me, I'm putting me first, and that's okay, and that's what we should all be doing. If we were all... A bit more selfish in terms of taking care of ourselves we wouldn't have the same relationships because we would be able to manage ourselves much better and take care of ourselves much better and so boundaries whether it's a, with a narcissist or your or your friends family or even future relationships boundaries are still good and it's not about creating a prison for yourself. I think that's really important. It's not about the, right, well, I'm not accepting this and I'm not having that and I'm not having that and I'm not having that because that's a very negative way of looking at it. It's about what is acceptable to me. What behaviours will I accept? So will I accept putting my feelings aside? Will I accept doing something that makes me feel uncomfortable? Will I accept allowing someone else to control what I do on a day-to-day -day basis? Will I allow someone else telling me what I can and can't do? Yes or no? No, I'm, I'm not going to do that. That is, Those are your boundaries. Equally, what it's for me, it's those, those two sides of what are you prepared to accept yourself what behaviors are you going to do so i'm not prepared to what wouldn't i do i wouldn't i wouldn't rescue someone else if they were <laughs> sorry my head went 10 steps ahead when i said that out loud i wouldn't i don't want to be a rescuer anymore that was one of mine one of my boundaries i don't want to be a rescuer anymore i wouldn't someone who is 
emotionally stable, who is able to look after themselves emotionally and isn't looking for me to be their mother figure. Um, but equally from them, I'm looking for someone who is able to take care of themselves, who is emotionally stable, who is emotionally intelligent enough to know if they're feeling pain and how they can deal with that. Um, and then it's that so there, there could be some really strict boundaries as well. You can have really, really solid ones of then uh, they're absolute deal breakers. If I do that or, or someone else does that, that's rock bottom. That is, I'm not doing that. There's no way that I will ever do that. And there's no way I'd ever accept that from someone else. But then you've got your sort of scale of them. So you, you have those where, well, under these circumstances, I might do this or I might do that or I might accept that. I might accept that. Um, and then you've got your fle more, much more flexible ones and they might be for different people. So you can have different boundaries for different people, different boundaries for different situations. And boundaries cover lots of things. So it might be the time that you turn your phone off at night. That can be really good, especially if you've got a business like me. What time do you stop taking business calls? What time do you stop working? And that's, again, it's come down to self-care. Um... But these are all really important things because the more you respect yourself in putting those boundaries in place, the easier it's going to be to stand by them because narcissists will not respond well when you put boundaries in place. They will want you to go back to the old you, the old malleable, easily controlled version of you. And the stronger you are maintaining those boundaries... So it's easy to set boundaries, it's harder to maintain them, but the stronger you are at maintaining them, the more likely you are to keep them out of your life, certainly keep them at a distance. And so boundaries, yeah, it, it, they are going to react, they are going to, there's going to be a very negative response, they're going to be very uncomfortable with it, they are going to try and push at you and they'll come at you from every angle as well that's the other thing they'll be very manipulative and clever in they, if they can't get through you a to b they might they'll bring someone else in your child perhaps so they will try and go round through other people to get your boundaries or they'll just use other ways like i said they will text you and pretending that there's an emergency when there isn't um they will um Pretend that they've, oh, that sorry, that wasn't meant for you, just so that you might say, oh, well, no problem. Because as soon as you reply, that they think you're on the hook again and they can reel you back in. Um, so be aware of that as well. Be aware that just because they're not coming at you to do your boundaries or they're not being obvious about it, they will be sneaky and try and get round. But also they will use other people. So it might be another family member, it might be your brother or sister that they try and get in touch with who then speaks to you and say why why aren't you speaking to them why won't you text them back they only want to know this um or it could be that they use the kids to can you ask them this or um mom or dad isn't doing this so be aware that there's lots of different ways that they will try to go around your boundaries but stick to it maintaining maintaining it Sorry, I don't know if it cut out then. Uh, decide what your boundaries are and then practice putting them in. And do not beat yourself up if you if you break one of them. You know, we all do it. Um, it's just about remembering next time. Being aware of their motive. Being aware that they are going to be sneaky. Being aware that actually everything they do has an ulterior motive. And just having it at the forefront of your mind what you are going to accept and what you're not and stick to it that is how you are going to keep them away but it won't be an easy ride i'm not going to sugarcoat it but the more self-care you do the more you take care of yourself emotionally and physically the stronger you'll get and the less you'll they'll be able to feed off of you and that is gives you the ultimate power I hope you found this live useful um if you have any questions do drop them by thank you for those of you that have watched and engaged i do appreciate it and i will try to do a 
live again on Friday about the same sort of time um, and I'll let you know um, close to the time what the topic will be but if you have got any questions with regards to topics you want covering pop them in the comments and I will cover that in a live for you it's great to be able to have these interactions and find out where you're at and what questions um you you have so that i can best serve you in terms of giving you what you need because when you've been through it you could sometimes forget all those earlier stages that we all go through um and so i want to be able to um cover whatever you need so like i say do share any questions that you have any topics that you want covering um and i will I will cover them in live so that you can hop on and ask any questions. Um, so take care, everyone. Have a really great evening and I will speak to you soon. Bye.